let's start with you guys since you're right beside us, Kate and Alden. Why don't you give us just a bit of an update on this last year, what's been happening, and what uh, what generally kind of your ministry looks like, any changes, things that, just give us the update for 2024 of what's, uh, what's happening right now, or maybe uh, a little bit about what you do if people don't know. Okay, well, we're kind of tag team here, so, uh, you know, overall, we, we are like a well-greased wheel. We've, we've been doing this for, for quite a while, so uh, going out, we kind of fine-tuned it, but we've realized that over the years, and especially in the beginning years, there is the potential to uh, kind of get pulled in different directions. So our focus is to, to remain in those uh, encounter moments. And there was a time where we were trying to do it all, meaning going on the street and then discipling and, and trying to mentor them through the process. But uh, like most ministry workers will say, you burn out. <laughs> so uh, we prayed about it and God, God gave me a vision. And it was of an ocean where people were drowning. And we would swim out, pull them on the shore, then swim out and uh, drag them you know, more and more back onto the, the shoreline. But the bodies kept piling up and there was no one to receive them and resuscitate them. So we were then caught in the middle. What do we do? Abandon the drowning or work on those on the shoreline? So God showed us that our focus was to swim out. Our ministry, the bus, is to go out and rescue those and, and bring them up to the shoreline. And the big, we'll talk about the need coming up, is that we're to pass them off to other ministries because we can't do it all. So we've been praying for spiritual ambulances to receive and transport those on the shore to be able to take them to the next level. So our focus again is to fine tune our first encounters, then pray for those to provide the next step. Attila, if anybody heard him speak uh, the Sunday morning that the locals spoke, uh, he, he talked about that. And there is a discipling and mentoring need for those coming off the street or for those who are even thinking about making the first life changes. So to be honest, I believe it is for such a time as this that North Central is going to be blessed with the answers to all the prayers that have been going out. And uh, I believe the seeds that are being planted uh, are going to germinate. And in Isaiah, uh, it says God does everything right at the right time. And I believe for such a time as this that many, I see faces here that have been praying into the community, have been praying for, for the dynamics of the streets, and I thought there's just, I don't know, does anybody else feel like there's just something happening yeah. in this yeah. Yeah. We have an amazing core team for Friday night. Our Tuesday team, afternoon team, has been hitting the mark as well. Our office is in the Break Free Outreach Center, located in North Central, a perfect location to reach the community. We foresee great things as our hearts join together and speak Jesus to the community. We continue to take our mobile and counter room, aka the Love Bus, out on Tuesday afternoons and Friday nights. We've seen many intoxicated people come to the bus, and after spending a little bit of time in God's presence, they sober up. <laughs> On the flip side, we have families and our individuals come to fellowship with us, be encouraged, and to be prayed for, and also to be blessed with some amazing food. It's amazing how many track us down to see how, to, to let us know they see someone struggling on the street because they want prayer for themselves, or sorry, so we can go and help them. We also get tracked by others who have family members that are struggling or lost on the street. Our common saying is, no night is ever the same. So we basically go where the Lord leads us and provide the encounter with the bus where Jesus will always provide the encounter. So we never know what the encounter will look like, but God always does. And anybody here, Tony Campola? Campola? Okay. Well, he had, uh, it's called The Least of These, if you get a chance to watch it. Uh, it's an incredible teaching moment. But it's based on a true story, and it's, it's, uh, it's about a visit he made to a diner. So I'm going to shorten it. I, I like to tell stories, and I can go for too long, so I'm just going to read it off here. So to make the story short, he basically threw a surprise birthday party for a regular street worker. She had never, even in her childhood, celebrated her birthday. 
Mm. So Tony got together with the others in the diner and blessed her one night with a cake and decorations. She was overwhelmed. A patron in the diner asked Tony, what kind of church do you go to? Tony replied, a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at three in the morning. The patron then replied, well, I would go to a church like that. And so because of your support of the Lump Bus, we want you to know that we do throw birthday parties at three in the morning for those on the street. So you're part of that. One last thing. Uh, we had a, a donation of, some, in some cases, brand new uh, coats and things, but uh, the coats have needed zipper repair, repairs. If there's anybody out there that can repair zippers, please get a hold of us. These coats are amazing, but we're just holding off until we can get it fixed. All right, Tyrell, you're new with us this year, so we're going to need a little background, uh, maybe where you're from, uh, what you're, well, I didn't even introduce your, uh, the ministry you're part of, but the Gospel Fire for All Nations. Maybe just tell us a little bit of the history of that and, uh, and what you've been up to. You're a busy lady right now, so uh, we've, seen, we've seen you all over Facebook, and we're seeing, uh, we're seeing posters around the city and uh, billboards and things popping up, but we're looking forward to knowing who you are and what you're about. Okay, so I am Terrell Smith, and I'm an evangelist, and I'm from the tiny town of Tisdale. I am a Sasker, and I'm super proud of that. I feel like if you cut me, I bleed wheat. Amen. <laughs> and I don't think there's anywhere else in the whole world that I appreciate the culture more than ours, and how in our culture we absolutely, without a doubt, belong to one another. And if I don't know you, I know your cousin, I know your uncle, I know the guy who hired your grandson. And you know everything about me with just a few phone calls. And there's something about where we are that is very conducive to a move of God and to a grassroots work. And I've been leading people to the Lord. You know, you are who you are. If you're a robin, you, bear, you build a robin's nest. If you're an eagle, you build an eagle's nest. Because the nest is, is, is what's inside of you instinctually. So we're exactly what we need to be for the assignments that we have. And so I've been leading people to the Lord since I was a child. But then, you know, God just began. He grows of the increase of his kingdom and of his peace. There's no end. And he began to grow things. And um, he called me to, um, to go to a school of evangelism down in Florida. And... From there, he just began to increase things, and eventually I was in Africa, and we're seeing, you know, hundreds of thousands come onto the field. And I'll get into, I don't want to spoil everything, because we're going to have an interview tonight, but what ended up happening to me is the same thing that happened to Joel. And I feel that that's why we're such good comrades on the field, you know? And that's that God, has called us to our nation because God is saving Canada and he's raising up Canadians to see Canadian fields cleared at the power of his name and so in the past year it says here you know what's what's been going on but last year uh, in 2022 God spoke to us very clearly that it was time to do a stadium event at Sastel, and you put in my heart in 2018, but in 2022, I said, God, if this is really you, put something in my hands today from Sastel Center Stadium, and I'm 100% in. But if you don't, I'm 100% out, and I'll never think of it again for as long as I live. <laughs> and I think there's something about having an undivided heart before the Lord, where God sees that, and I said, let heaven decide. And that day a man put a, um, two photos in my hands and one was Billy Graham preaching in South Hell Center Stadium and the other was a picture of the promo. I was just hoping literally in my mind I was imagining just like a pamphlet with a logo on it from South Hell Center but the Lord sent a photo of an evangelist so that he would know that we would know in Saskatchewan that God was ready to clear fields for his glory. Amen. Amen. And so the Lord, you know, he's faithful to watch over his word. And he sent 12,000 people to gather at his name. And he saved a 1,000 
Sask Souls. And, he, and miracles flow through the hands of everyday Saskers as they laid hands on the, on the sick. And, and people recovered because of the Lord in the name and the power of God. So that's been my last 12 months and then, and then moved down here for August and, well, didn't move, but moved my eyes. <laughs> moved my eyes. And the Lord had spoken to us um, that he was, he was fixing to do something at Mosaic. And as we stepped into the waters, you know, we have this word that we learned from Saskal Center. And we've learned to work arm in arm with whoever will link with us because sometimes the wisdom you need is found in your brother. Amen? Yeah. And there's this pastor who said, Terrell, step. If the waters part, keep going. And so when we stepped, the waters just kept parting and parting and parting. And so right now we've seen, we have like at least, I don't, I don't quote me on this, Kristen knows the details. And I'm looking over at the other crusade directors. Like, yeah. But yeah, like at least 38 churches on board to see this happen. And we're seeing just a brotherhood that is emerging right here. <laughs> In, in this city. It's so beautiful. Amen. Exciting times, amen? <laughs> um, we'll come back over to Kate and Alden and maybe just give us a, a standout moment for your ministry in the last 12 months, something in the, the last year. Did, did I, I don't think I missed one. I think that's what <laughs> okay, great. I'm actually going to list several small points, but they're big ones to us because we can't be out there with, without the support of so many people. Uh, one example, we had 13 windows smashed out on the, our bus and it's vandalized. And the person steps up and <coughs> fixed them, only charged for materials. And we're, we missed one week. We're so close to being out there without any intimacy at all. We're, we're supported by many. Another one, mechanic uh, replaces a water pump in a snowstorm late at night. <laughs> um, Another one, uh, rebuilding our step on a Saturday, taking, giving time away. Someone giving gift cards that we can give out on uh, Christmas Eve to support, for support of right now. So. Well, I had a standout moment this morning with that worship, <laughs> Waymaker, Miracle Worker, and I got one good leg and it jumped. It went up, it just went going, and I was just against it. So right there, Careful, this is getting stronger. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, to pick one, it's really hard because it's like every week there's a standout moment. But one just came in recently to us, and it, that actually I got an email from uh, the church here uh, late on a Saturday night, and uh, somebody had contacted the church Facebook, and this is what the message said. It says, "Are you the love bus?" Uh, a family member passed and spoke highly of the people on the Love Bus. The church replied, Hello, Love, bus, Love Lives Here Bus Ministry, a.k.a. the Love Bus, is one of Harvest City Church's ministry partners and the main organi uh, organizers do attend our church. Was there anything you wanted us to pass along to them or that you need from them? And their reply was, Pass on those that are operating the Love Bus that so-and-so succumbed to his addictions and passed Saturday. He spoke so highly of them. And I thought, how humbling, what a blessing that that this family member took that time to, to search for us. Because we don't have a website. It we, we fly under the radar mm -hmm. because we're working with very, uh, uh, somewhat dangerous situations, but very volatile people. So we just don't want to be known to the general public, but to God's people. So for them to actually reach out, it just really blessed my heart because we realized that the seeds we're planting to those that we directly minister on the street, they're taking those seeds and they're spreading into their families. And we don't really see all the dynamics that, that are taking place. And so, I don't know, it, it's just, you know, we were, Saturday nights, we were out till the wee hours of Saturday morning. So it just so happened we were up late that one night, that Saturday night, 
that came in, a, a fire got lit in me that, that uh, you know, there's more going on than, than what we realize and uh, many more lives are being affected. So it was just a real encouragement, but also such a blessing. Amen. Yeah. Tyrell, all right, a, a highlight from this past year. We know that it would probably be beating Joel Wells, but uh, <laughs> totally. if you go for number two, we'll, go, we'll pick your number two highlight. You know, I'm laughing, but it's actually true. <laughs> it's so true, he's such a bro. And I just wanted y'all to know I'm a good she-bro. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, one of the highlights um, this past year has actually been seeing um, all of these pastors and this, this deep level of brotherhood emerge and this unity. And when the Spirit was moving, when He was doing the work, you don't have to sell anything. You're not, you don't have to sell a vision. Mm. The Lord has gone. And he's begun to knit people's hearts together in so much love, which I think is is um, so powerful for the province. And I, I feel like I'm watching um, the prophetic words of, of God over the province emerge from within this city in real time. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to share a couple of um, amazing moments from this year. But one of the cool things that happened at the last event was there's these two boys that came and um, I'm a mom of boys so this story really appeals to me and they had come to the stadium because they wanted to make fun of the preachers <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to get girls phone numbers so girls be careful stay close to your dad at Jose yeah. <laughs> and, so while they were there and they were hearing the gospel they got just deeply touched and one of them was dealing with anxiety, he was dealing with suicidal thoughts, he had lost his dad, and he was, he was a train wreck. But when he heard the gospel, he gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He got baptized, and within three weeks, he was in South Africa as a missionary, taking his training so he could serve the Lord. Photos and as a mother to every mother and father, like when you see this, I see they're they're, they're standing there and they're see, I'm standing up and they're in their jeans and you can see their boxer marquee marks or whatever, and they're standing there, fresh out of the water and their eyes are lit with the Holy Spirit and the joy of our God is upon them and I'm like, that's got to be all of our boys, all of our babies, amen. Yeah. It just gave me such faith. Amen. Great. Awesome how God can change some people's lives in an instant like that, right? Amen. Some people it takes a few years. Uh, but <laughs> sometimes he does amazing things over in a, in a very short time. Okay, uh, let's keep going on here. Um, thinking about our theme, home, can you think of an individual or a story that is or an individual who has felt at home because of the work you guys do. And you've kind of shared that a little bit already, but maybe just a, a story about home and thinking about this theme, um, what it made you think of when it comes to your ministry. Okay, well, if you heard us uh, speak a few weeks ago, we talked about uh, when we went to Bethel, and you came into the room today. And, uh, and so I, I see the bus now as a place that people come into the room today. And so there was uh, one, one gal that, that we pursued for probably 13 years. The story begins 13 years ago. And the first encounter we had with, I'll call her Elle, uh, it was pretty rough. And she was not too sure about us. And you know, this, these weird people show up in a school bus and they just sit there and watch you. <laughs> and so, but anyway, uh, each week we would park that bus by their house and the best way I can describe it would be a drug house, uh, which meant there was often police there taking, dragging people out hogtied and, and uh, lots of people coming and going. And, but we just kept showing up and we'd send hot chocolate and lunch bags their way. And in return, we would more often than not hear the curses and threats directed our way while they chowed down on our amazing sandwiches. <laughs> Great, our amazing hot chocolate. And, uh, and often we would hear from the house, you blankety, blankety Christians, get off our property. 
And, uh, but it never intimidated us. We just said, you know, bless you, bless you. Yeah. And so eventually, I'm talking about a couple of years, I, again, we just kept showing up, bringing the food. Then the night came, came into the room, the day. You see Elle standing at the door of the bus and uh, she entered the encounter room and things started to change. From then on, uh, she would start bringing her mate, who was a very interesting character, and uh, challenged us in many different ways. One of our volunteers is, is Dawn Gordon, uh, a Jamaican gal who has such a heart for the Lord, and she is anointed to deal with gang members and these tough guys, and she can just point at them and they just, <laughs> you know, whatever. One time somebody stepped on her foot and, uh, Wow, she just said, ouch, and they're like, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> and anyway, it, uh, what was that? This, this guy had just been saying, get off of this block, it's my block, get out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, well, on, then he stepped on her foot, and all of a sudden, yeah, just the switch. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we just made this amazing connection, and we visit them now every week. And uh, she has just become like a daughter to us. And we're able to, uh, she's been opening up. Like it's just amazing, it's been, this is the 13th year and now she sits and she cries and she starts telling her story. And what a privilege, what an honor. And we're able to hold her and, and comfort her and uh, you know, bless her and, and pray for her. And she's texting me lots, she, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning, I finally put on my do not disturb, because I get texts, because they live the night, like that's their time, is, is in the night. And uh, she's always got videos and pictures and, and trying to encourage me with, with her style of encouragement, which is quite entertaining. <laughs> but anyway, that, that to me is, is uh, one of my standout moments. For me, it is a guy I call Ant. We first encountered him, uh, he was usually outed on drugs and alcohol. He had uh, he gradually told us his story. He had been in jail for, uh, first uh, he had killed a relative because this relative was molesting his female relatives. So he went to prison for that and then wound up killing somebody else. Or when, this all happened when he was a teen. Uh, he was very rough around the edges but he kept being drawn to the bus. One time he came to the bus, he just brought along a friend who was out of prison. And as I talked with uh, Ann, I noticed his friend pick up a rock. Mm. And it was one of those moments he'd just say, Lord, cover me. And okay, I have to add to this. <laughs> okay, so at the time, Elton's hair was longer and, and for whatever reason, it goes in a mohawk. Like you, you just you can't make these happen, right? So anyway, and, and he's shorter and this guy's taller. And so we're sitting on the bus and we see this guy picking up rocks. And I see Eldon's mohawk kind of going back and forth and he's talking to Anne. And all of a sudden, this other guy, he's like, oh! and, and he's got these rocks and he tries to throw them at Eldon. And we're praying, Lord, you know, like, you know, help him. And these rocks would literally fly and just go up in front of his face and back over his head. And this guy was getting frustrated. And it was just more of this, oh, you know, all of these ninja moves. And, and nothing could happen. And he finally just gave up and, and walked away. It was, it was just one of those crazy moments. <laughs> <laughs> so I finished praying with Ann, and I turned to his friend and asked him if he, there was, a, could I pray for him for anything? And he kind of went, <laughs> and then wandered off. He was, he was acting like a snake. <laughs> uh, today, Ann is several years sober. He has wow. a home, a spouse, two kids. Mm -hmm. We stop and visit him regularly, and. Uh, visit and pray with him and his house. And while we're doing that, some of the team will be playing with the kids. And, uh, at the same time, there's always other people going by that will be ministering to them, but the last time we were out, uh, we stopped there, and when we went to leave, 
his daughter, he had to carry her away because she was throwing a tantrum because we really did. Wow. <laughs> Great stories. I hope the moral of that story wasn't we have to have good hair to be protected by God. <laughs> Me and Joel are in trouble. We're going to need some extra prayer. <laughs> All right, Tyrell, <laughs> you're on. <laughs> I too am concerned about the hair. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, so finding home. Um, there's a couple that I, I want to share. Um, there's a woman who came out to, to the last event. And um, George Canyon came as a secular draw. He's also an ordained minister and um, country music stars, you know. And so this woman had been praying for her husband for years. And he actually agreed to come so he could hear George Canyon. And George would sing his songs. And then between the songs, he would talk about what Jesus had done for him and how God had spoken to him. And then he'd sing the next song until the atmosphere was permeated with the presence of the Lord. And he finished off singing, How Great Thou Art, and sings, My soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. So then we preach the gospel, and at the altar call, she comes down, and one of our pastors is looking at her like, You're saved, what are you doing here? And he peeked his head around. And he saw her husband. And he gave his life to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Terrell, when you, as an evangelist, see people come to Christ, you're only thinking about that one person. But he said, in that moment, his life was not the only one that was changed. Her life was changed. <laughs> and I just thought, like, wow. Not only did he come home to Christ, but their home came home to Christ. Right. Right. Amen? Right. And then um, one of my favorite moments was going to meet the sound guy from Mosaic. And I'm not super experienced in that category. And um, just turn it up. That's my answer. Turn it up. <laughs> and, but as we go in, I'm telling him, like he was asking us questions and stuff, and I, and I said, Saskatel Center was, I started telling him about Saskatel and what Jesus had done there and telling him all about how much I love the manager of that stadium and how much we had learned from him and how much I respected him. And as we're going on, he turns to me and he says, there's something different about you. And I said to him, it's funny, you know, it's not what's different about me, it's who's different. And I began to recount to him what Jesus had done for other people's lives. And the man's eyes filled with tears. And he said, he said to me, that's what we need. And that's what I need. I said, I know. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. God knew that we would cross paths today. And today is the day that's your coming home day. And I said, now, this moment can pass right now. And it will pass. But Jesus is standing at the door of your heart right now. And he's knocking. And he said, and I said, if you open that door, he will come into you. He'll wash you clean. His blood will make you new. And he'll make you new. I said, but when this life is over, you're going to go into all of him. You're just going to change location. And I said, if you want, I'll pray with you right now. And he says, yes, yes. And so I said, well, scoot over here. And he moves his chair over in front of other businessmen that were sitting all around him. That man gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, you know, this is my favorite part. <laughs> if we tilt those speakers up, the whole city will hear this. <laughs> As a musician, I say, amen. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, okay. Well, let's go into this last one. We're going to ask you for your 
biggest prayer needs right now, and then we'll have a chance to, to pray for you at the end of that. But let's start by just uh, getting some of those needs out so that when we're praying for you, we can uh, target a few of those things and believe with you. The trucks on the street right now are brutal. They're, we have lost many, many friends. Uh, even, for example, we had a, about a month ago, a grandma chased us down. All she wanted was prayer. Her son and his wife had tried fentanyl once, and both of them passed away. So she, she had her two granddaughters with her and was asking, Your prayers against these, these drugs would be greatly, greatly appreciated. So yeah, and uh, I guess for all ministries, it's volunteers, and uh, yeah, just knowing that eventually we're going to have to pass the baton on. I'm a lifer for this ministry, and I'm not going anywhere soon. But we do need to be mentoring somebody to fill our position. So, so that's one of our needs, and I know it's for for others too. But Attila also hit uh, on it that, you know, again, in what I shared at the beginning, we've kind of, we've really fine-tuned what we're, what we're doing, but it's the next level. It's it, uh, Christian uh, warming centers, cooling centers for the summer. We've had, uh, you know, community ones that have been running, but we have a vision for Christian-run uh, facilities that are both warming and cooling but then we also need one that's discipling and mentoring because these guys are raw they're just coming off the street and it's a different level of mentoring and discipling but you know again God does everything right at the right time and I believe we are just on the cusp yeah. of, of facilities being raised up we have break free ministries that are being represented here too that that is another piece of that puzzle and so we would just really ask that, that you pray. I don't know exactly what that looks like. Everybody asks us, what do you need, what do you need? I don't know, but God does. Mm -hmm. And so we just ask that you would pray, that you would help us get that vision. There's lots of unity that's coming within North Central, working together. That's been a prayer. Uh, God put a, a vision in me when we first stepped into this ministry that, that God was building a bridge. And it, it came from where Break Free is over towards Morningstar. And, and it was just blending into the community. And it started with one board at a time. And it's like, again, God does everything right at the right time. And for such a time as this, it's like I finally saw that last board nailed onto this bridge. And it's like, yes, it's, it's there. But I don't quite see what that looks like yet. And if, if, if we will be part of it. But we need the person that God uh, downloads that vision to, to run with it. We'll be there hand in hand working with them, but we just need that body, that person, those people to, wow, get it, and here we go. So hold on. Next year, you know, I know that there will be a testimony of, remember what we said last year? Yeah. Here we are. Let's go, baby. So. Yeah. Thanks. I just want to touch on something regarding North Central first. Is that okay? Sure. So, when I, yeah, I hope that we have faith. Like, okay, forget it. Let's have faith. <laughs> <laughs> because every person in North Central needs the gospel, and it's a supernatural thing, right? And I believe that that God wants us to see all of that stuff broken, and we've been praying into it for, there's seed time and harvest, and I think it's time for harvest. I know it's time for harvest. I was just being polite about it. It's time for a harvest of everything that we've prayed into to happen in that region, and I think God is, is going to do something big, and, and I hope, and I'm like, God, I believe that you want to bring us the drug addicted, the alcoholics, those that have suffered with abuse and and challenges generationally bring them lord because the lord's going to come and do a great work amen okay so the greatest prayer need i have i think that to be perfectly vulnerable is to say i think 
I had a dream years ago that I was driving in the car we actually own now. We actually bought the car after the dream, not knowing. And I was driving down the road in this car, and there was this two horses running at our car. And their chest was rippling with muscles. And in the dream, I was like, hit me as hard as you can. And I was bracing for this impact. And when I woke up, I said, God, what is that? And he said, you know, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus went around doing good. But he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. And I believe that's what, the, what God wants to release to see the nation saved. That's my prayer request. God, would you hit us as hard as you can. Amen? So that would be my prayer request. Everything else will follow. Every dollar, every volunteer, every bit of faith, everything that we need. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Well, let's... Uh, let's